All right, well, thanks for joining me today. I thought for uh, today's video, we just do a quick flight into a airport with a control tower. I know if you haven't been flying long, maybe you haven't even gotten started yet. Talking on the radio sounds intimidating. So I'm just going to show you today how simple it actually is going into an airport that has a control tower. So I'm about uh, 15 miles west of McKinney Airport. So I've got McKinney uh, tuned in. Uh, first thing we're going to do is listen to the automated weather that uh, they have there. It's called an ATIS at this airport. So I got that tuned into my number two radio. I'm going to get that ready to go. I'll listen to that. I'm going to be listening for the winds, uh, the altimeter setting, so I can uh, recalibrate my altimeter. Uh, and anything special about the airport, especially which runway they're landing on, which I probably can tell that by the winds. So let's tune in the ATIS and uh, see what they have to say here. Disney Tower Information X-ray 2353 Zulu, wind 120 at 6, visibility 10, few clouds at 3,700, temperature 28, 2.21, altimeter 2978. Expect the visual approach, landing and departing runway 18. Hazardous weather information available on flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact, you have information X-ray. Okay, information X-ray. So I got the altimeter set. Uh, they're landing on runway 18. The winds are out of the southeast and fairly light. So um, I'm going to set myself up going directly to the airport. He will probably tell me to enter uh, either a, uh, a downwind or maybe even a base. Right now I'm about 13 miles out. Uh, I'd like to call him, if I call him 10 miles out, that's pretty nice. But as long as I call him prior to entering their airspace is uh, all that's actually required. And on the uh, foreflight, you can see here, uh, where the dashed blue line is, that's where McKinney's airspace starts. So I still got a little ways, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and tune up the tower. I got the tower frequency in there. That's 118.82. So I'm going to bring up the tower, start listening to that. All right, we're 10 miles out, so I'm going to go ahead and give McKinney Tower a call. McKinney Tower, Cessna 401 Delta Tango. Cessna 401 Delta Tango, McKinney Tower. One Delta Tango, Cessna 172, 10 miles to your west, 2,300, inbound for full stop landing with X-ray. Cessna 401 Delta Tango, register right in a right base, runway 18. Enter right base, 18, one Delta Tango. All right, well, that was easy. So I uh, just let her know about where we were at, what we wanted to do, and then she told me how to enter the traffic pattern. So a right base makes sense, and it's actually really easy for us. We're kind of set up almost for a right base. When I get just a little bit closer to the airport, I'll make a slight left turn, and that'll get me uh, lined up with a left base. we got about eight miles to go. I'm at uh, 2,300 feet. Pattern altitude we set is going to be 1,600, so I've got about 700 feet to lose, which uh, won't take very long. Um, and I'll stay up here a little higher as long as I can. I'm over relatively congested area here. Not, not many places to land in an emergency other than a lot of golf courses. So I'm going to keep all the altitude that I can until I can cross over the, uh, the city below me. As you can see, looking at four flight, there is a uh, light green color. That is my uh, glide ratio. So if for some reason I hit an engine failure right now, um, that green ring represents approximately how far the airplane would glide. It's kind of cool because it actually takes into account our ground speed, where the wind is coming from. The wind's relatively calm right now, and that's why that circle is relatively centered around the airplane. If I was flying into a really Cessna strong... 401 Delta Tango, runway 18, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 18, 1 Delta Tango. If I was flying into a really stiff wind, then that uh, green ring would be a little closer to the airplane, meaning I can't go as far into the wind as I could uh, with the wind at my tail. Okay, so, man, this is a really good day to show you uh, an easy flight into a controlled uh, towered airport. So, she's already cleared me to land. As you can see, I'm uh, just now about four miles from the airport. There's really nobody else in the pattern, it sounds like. So, um, I'm approaching the airport now, and I got the airport in sight. I'm going to make a left turn about 30 degrees so I can head out towards the base. And I'm going to start my descent slowly as I'm starting to cross over the town. Actually, I'm probably going to hold my altitude just a little bit longer. 
I would love it if my green circle, my glide ratio circle there, would touch the runway <laughs> before I started down over this congested area. Because where I'm at right now, there's really not a lot of uh, good choices. I know you're thinking, Dave, you talk about losing your engine a lot. I'm actually just being proactive to think, always, kind of always be thinking. Even though these airplanes are incredibly reliable, they're uh, very reliable engines. We always need to be planning on where we would go in the event that we had a engine failure. Okay, I'm uh, on a right base now, which is what she instructed me to do. And um, I'm approaching the pattern, so I really need to get down kind of quick. Get down into the traffic pattern. We've got the carburetor heat on, the mixture is rich, the fuel is on both. I got all my lights on, my seatbelt's still on. Looking out on final, I don't see anybody. I think I'm actually the only person here at McKinney today. Don't expect this on all your trips to a control tower. Sometimes it can be pretty hectic and sometimes it can be there's really not much of anything going on. All right, I got the runway in sight. On a right base, I'm within gliding range of the uh, runway now. And I'm uh, just descending through the pattern altitude. I'm below my first notch of flap speed. That's uh, 10 degrees. I have to be below 110 knots, so going to flaps 10. Looking out on final, so don't see anybody else. I'll go ahead and bring the power to idle from here, because I got the runway made. I kind of came in a little higher and steeper. I'm inside the white arc, 85 knots is the max speed to more flaps. I'm going to go with flaps 20. Start my turn to final. She's already cleared me to land. I have the ground control frequency in standby. Always keep the airplane trim so you can take your hand off of it. Never want to be fighting against the airplane. Turned my base a little soon. There's really nobody out here, so. Got uh, red over white on the VASI that says I'm right on the glide path. I can tell I got a little bit of a left crosswind. The airplane's kind of crabbing a little to the left. It means I'll take just a little bit of right rudder on touchdown. Power is off. Just bleed off my speed, stay right over the center line. That's the stall warning going off, which means it's nice and slow. Right on the center line. System 1 Delta Tango, safe parking. I'm going to go to the uh, FBO. System 1 Delta Tango, Roger, you can take it down to Bravo 3, and the FBO will be straight ahead at Bravo 3, this frequency. Okay, uh, Bravo 3 to the ramp with you, 1 Delta Tango. All right, so uh, no need to even call ground control this time. So. Since the tower is not very busy right now, she's probably the only one working in the tower. So, did not instruct me to switch over to, to ground control, which they normally would do. And plus, it's a really short taxi. Right when I pull off the runway here, see on the uh, airport map here, Bravo th 3 lines up perfectly with the um, lines up perfectly with the FBO. All right, once I clear the runway. You could stop if you need to, but um, I kind of know where I'm going. I'm comfortable with this, so I'm going to go ahead and just open my window for a little air while I'm taxiing. I'm bringing my flaps up, leaning my mixture out, carburetor heat back in, landing lights off, strobe lights off, just my beacon on, and nav light. Okay, well, that's uh, flying into a controlled airport with the tower. Pretty simple. Oh, hey, finally somebody else is calling on the tower. But I encourage you uh, to get out and uh, go to your local, uh, find an airport that's got a control tower. If you're new to flying, hopefully your instructor will take you somewhere that's not too awfully busy on your first flight. And uh, once you get uh, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much the same no matter where you go. Anywhere in the country you can go. And it's pretty much the same procedures. So, well, thanks for coming along with me. And I uh, hope to see you on another video soon.